chapter five, 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 friction. Actually, I mean, it, it's all these forces of constraint. So that's what we're doing here in chapter five. We're looking at forces of constraint. Um, and so really there's three of those, three. There is the, uh, there's the normal force, there's the frictional force, and then there's tension. So we're gonna do an example um, using technically all three. So here's, here's the situation. So I have a block. That's not a block, that's the ground. So I have a block. It has a mass of 0 0.45 kilograms. And I pull it with a string that way. And let's say I pull uh, with a force, with a tension. I'm going to write that as a scalar value of, let's say, uh, 1.8 Newtons. And it's th at that instant it starts to slide. So if that's the case, what's the frictional force on this block? Okay, step number one is to draw a free body diagram. A free body diagram says, let's take this dot right here and let's represent that as our object because we don't care where the force is applied on the object yet, uh, just that there are forces on it. So we only need a dot to represent the object. So now I need to think of um, what long range forces do I have and what contact forces do I have? So there's only one long range force you'll usually deal with and that's the gravitational force. So I'll, I'll put MG, or G is the uh, gravitational field. Uh, now I also know what's touching it. Well, I have this uh, surface is touching, it's pushing it up. So I have this force in. I don't know if they're equal or not. Let's just, let's just, let's be patient, okay? Let's be patient. Now I have this string pulling on it right here, so I have that tension. Now I'm drawing it as a vector. Now I know that the net force is zero. I know this. How do I know that? Because it's stationary. So I'm at that magical point right when it starts to move, but it, it's at that breaking point. So then there has to be a force pushing back this way, and that would be the frictional force, static frictional force. Okay, now the next step. I need to pick my x and y axis. In this case, it probably makes sense to pick this as x and this as y. Okay, so now I can write this equation as two equations. I can say f net x equals zero. Those are the forces in the x direction. And then I can say f net y equals zero. Because if the total, and there's z too, but I'm not dealing with z. Okay, so what forces are acting in the x direction? Here I have uh, the tension minus the friction force. And so you'll notice here that this is a scalar equation. So I do need to put in there if it's in the positive or negative x direction. So right there I can say F friction static is equal to the tension force, which I know. Okay, now in the y direction, I can say n minus mg equals zero, n equals mg, which I know. Finally, I can use my friction model. The static friction is equal to, this is the maximum, the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Well, I can put everything in and I get T equals mu s mg Solve for the coefficient mu. That's a this is a Greek letter mu. Just I want to be clear. Okay. And that's gonna be T over Mg. So it's gonna be 1.8 Newtons divided by 0.45 times 9.8. And I get I'm moving over my calculator. So see T was 1.8 Newtons. Uh, so mu s equals T divided by M times G print. I get 0 0.408. No units. That's it. So it's pretty sticky. That's fine. Okay. So we're good with that. Let's do it again. Same block. Okay. Same block. Watch this. What if I do the following?
Now I want to pull on it, but I want to pull at some angle tension, at some angle theta. And let's just say theta equals 35 degrees. How hard would I have to pull it to get it to move? Okay, so remember before I pulled at 1.8 newtons, would I have to pull harder or not as hard to pull? It's not quite obvious, okay? Because let's draw, let's think about what happens. If I pull up at an angle, I'm not pulling as much to the side. So you'd think you'd have to pull more. But if I pull up, I'm going to reduce that normal force and then the friction is going to be less. So I have two things fighting each other and it's not completely obvious what, what to do. Um, this would be a fun problem to do the optimal angle, but let's just go ahead and solve. If it's at 35 degree angles, let's solve for the tension I need to pull it. Start off with a, a free body diagram. So I have, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this as my x direction. And that's my y, and there's my tension. And that's the angle theta. And then I have the gravitational force. Then I have the normal force. And then I have the frictional force. So I have all the same forces, it's just that this is at an angle now. Okay, so again, I have uh, F net X equals zero. And that's going to be, uh, now I have the same, I still have two forces acting in the X. Okay, sorry for the interruption. So here I have F net X is zero. So I, ha I still have the same force. I still have friction in the negative direction, but now I have this part of tension. Let me draw it, draw it over here. So here is my tension force. And there's the angle theta. This is Tx. That is Ty. So if I say the sine of theta, that's going to be equal to Ty over T. Cosine theta is Tx over T. So that means that the x component of this is going to be T cosine theta. And then I need to have minus the friction minus FSS equals zero. Okay, so that's a little bit different. Now in the y direction, it's a lot different because now I have three forces acting in the y direction. I have the normal force. I have part of the tension, the y component. So it's gonna be plus T sine theta and then minus mg. So the, remember, I wanna solve for T. So the first thing I'm going to need to do is solve for this friction force. So let's go ahead and say we're at the case where it's just starting to slide. So the, the static friction force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Now, so that means I need to find the normal force. So over here, N equals, uh, if I just add that to both sides and then subtract that from both sides, I get Mg minus T sine theta. So now I can put this in up here. And I get the static friction is the coefficient of friction times mg minus t sine theta. Now I can put that up here. Okay, so let's put that up here and I get t cosine theta minus all this stuff. And I'm going to multiply it out. Minus mu s mg minus mu s t sine theta equals zero. And I want to solve for what? Right, T. So I'm going to, let's add this to both sides. Mu S M G. Let me get another piece of paper. So then I get T cosine theta minus mu S T sine theta equals mu S M G. Now I can factor out a T, T times cosine theta minus mu s sine theta equals mu s mg and divide both sides by this I get t equals mu s mg over cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. Okay so now I know all my values right so I can say t equals 0 0.408.45 9.8, and I'm left off the units, and then cosine of 35 minus 0.408 sine of 35. 
Uh, now let's just think actually, is it possible that I can't pull it? Is it possible the tension could be negative? Uh, yeah, I think. What if I pull straight up? Hmm. Well, this could this be bigger than that? Or smaller? Probably. Yeah, it could, and you could get negative tension. What would that even mean? Well, let's just, let's just put, put in values here. Okay, so you, if you have your calculator in radians mode, uh, just be aware. So I have mine in radians, so I'm going to convert that. So it's 35 times pi divided by 180. And then I get uh, T equals um, US times M times G divided by cosine theta minus mu s times sine theta. Let's see what, oh, this has to be T2. Otherwise I'll really get messed up. Okay, let's see what I get. I get T equals 3.08 newtons. So it's a greater force to pull it. Um, this would be fun to do as a numerical problem to find out uh, the, the needed tension as a function of angle and what tension is the best. I think I might do that, just because it would be fun to show you how you really can play with this kind of stuff. Um, I'll do that in another video, but there you go. We're get, we got a lot of friction problems because there's a whole bunch of stuff to do. But the most important thing here, the most important thing is this. the normal force is not equal to mg. I just want to point that out. Okay. Like the, like the channel, subscribe the channel, or oh, whatever, all that stuff. I'll talk to you guys later.